One of the most powerful improvements in Studio Vision Pro 4 is the consolidated select and modify window. There are many ways to get into this window, for example, editing options like transpose, quantize, modify, and many others will put you into the select and modify window and get it all set up for you. Let's just say our snare drum track here needs more velocity. I'm going to select the track and just hop into the window this way so we can set it up from scratch. I'm going to say, for all selected note events, do I want to transpose? No. I want to change velocity. I want to scale by a constant value of 150%. When I hit change, Studio Vision puts me back so I can listen to the change I made and see if I like it, but the select and modify window stays open. If I don't like it, I can always undo it. I could select multiple tracks and make any change I want with just one click. Changes you can make to notes include transposing and harmonizing, velocity and duration changes, permanent quantizing, moving, and many more. Here's another example. Here's a French horn part that really needs a harmony, but I only want the top note harmonized. I don't want to harmonize the low note, which I can see is a D3, or anything below it. So I'll select my French horn track and say, not for all note events, but I'll add a modifier by clicking this plus button. I'll say when the pitch is from E flat 3 through G8, which include all notes above D3, I'll say I want to transpose in a diatonic scale. My song's in D major, so I'll set that here, and I'll say I want a harmony note, oh, how about a third down. Instead of transpose, I'll click harmonize, which leaves my original notes there and adds the harmony notes. Well, that sounds good, but let's undo that and try something else. Let's try an inverted harmony around the note G3. Diatonically in D major. If I click show map, I can see exactly what each note will be harmonized with. Hey, that's not bad. There are so many different types of transpose options, including a really handy drum map that will translate drum parts between different MIDI devices. Boy, this would have saved me a lot of sleepless nights in the old days. You can add more modifiers by clicking this plus button. For example, if you only wanted to affect high notes that were in the first two bars, that were played with a hard velocity, and so on, you could set up just about any criteria you wanted. Once you get this select and modify window set up perfectly, and you think you might want to do the same exact thing sometime in the future, you can save and name your exact window settings at that moment. To take away modifiers, just click the minus key next to them. And later, if we wanted to recall our bizarre setting, here it is. Remember how with transpose, we had the option of transposing our original notes or creating a new harmony part? With the move command, you can either move your original notes or have Studio Vision create new notes. Same thing with set instrument and substitute. Now let's look at segments. Here's a talk radio intro project I'm working on, and it has a two bar repeating phrase. The problem is, if I want to change something, like making the bass part a little cooler, I now have to delete all these measures, then option drag the change part. Wait a minute, this is way too time consuming. Instead, I'm going to delete the repeated material and make this phrase into a segment by selecting it and choosing Make Segment Loop from the Edit menu. Now I have two different choices make single track segments, or I'm going to make one segment with multiple tracks. I'm going to name it Mod Loop and set it to loop four times. Now I'll say Make, and there's my loop segment. Segments appear here in the Segment section of the Sequence window. If you want, you can copy a segment right from the Sequence window and paste or merge it anywhere in your tune. You can adjust the number of loops just by dragging the end of the loop segment and, of course, copy it by option dragging. Double-click any occurrence of a segment, and you'll go right to the original music. Obviously, any change you make will automatically change anywhere in your song that this segment happens. Now I'm going to unmake this segment back into regular tracks and show you the single track segments. This time I'll say, Make Single Track Segments. I'll turn the loop off, and you'll see that Studio Vision created three separate segments, one for each track. Now here's a cool arranging technique. I'm going to copy these segments and then select the drums and baritone the first time and the drums only the second time through. Now I'm going to mute these segments 
and listen to my arrangement. So without ever deleting anything, you can mute and unmute segments to experiment with different combinations. By going to the original segment, I could also set up a loop which could then become a nested loop. Considering that these tracks containing loops could also be looped, you can see that your arranging options are almost limitless. Now let's look at Studio Vision Pro's new Input Effect window. You can set the effect to repeat, but I like arpeggiate. I'm going to click latch so I don't have to keep my hand on the keyboard. And you can see we can change our note order and the number of octaves over which the arpeggiation ranges. I'm going to say sync to counter so it's synchronized with our sequence. And here we have access to all quantize parameters, including grid and groove quantize, and all of our saved quantize templates. I'm going to set us up for a 30 second note plain Jane quantizing. Open up a sequence. We're set to record on track one, so I'll hit record, and you'll see the arpeggiation actually records onto the track. Very cool.